Hello guys, you're greasing back to another video of Katia V5 and in this video I will show you how to design a plane using the generative shape design feature of Katia. So let's get started. So first things first, so in order to make any part, I would rather recommend anyone to start with the product. So just make a, go to a new product, double click on it and underneath the product itself, you can insert a new component by right click uh, by simply right -click, right clicking on the product and clicking on components and going to new part and clicking on it again so now you have you can also rename by right click and properties here you can write plane one plane one and i'm going to write the name for the part as well which is the sub product as plane dot one and this has just plane let's say I'm just going to write it as plane and now I can save it and it's going to save as a product as you can see cat product I'm going to save it just on my desktop for my reference plane one hit yes there we go so it's already saved so now the thing is when I want to work with generative shape design, I would need to be within the part feature of it. Right? You can see when I double clicked on the part, it opened up all the generative shape design features. Whereas when I double click on the product, it takes me to a different kind of which is right now is a sketch tracer. So the feature that the first thing that I want to do is in order to design a plane, I would need to have three views by which I can actually design a plane. So the normal three views are the front view, the side view, and the top view. So in that sense, what I can do is either if you have a blueprint or a three view sections of any plane with you, you can simply save as jpg and just use those or you can just go to google and just find any random plane in this case i've used airbus a380 and i got a fairly good enough sketch to work with right so i'm just going to save this one i'm just going to go simply drag it all the way click here and you can simply say that okay i'm going to save that which is a 3d view and save as and then you can save it as desktop I'm going to save it. So now I have the entire thing to work with. So first things first, you need to be very particular about when you get started. Sometimes when your material is not defined, by default it's going to be, I think, shading with edges. So let's say if I try to bring any particular sketch or a picture of JPG or any extension, I would need to first of all come at Sketch Tracer which is one of the features under the shape as well right here which, uh, which is the second feature in order to bring the pictures or any sketch to work from or to trace a sketch from in order to make one of the particular view for the plane itself so in that sense once i come here let's say if i try to create an immersive sketch by clicking here and i'm going to click that okay this was the picture that I saved and click OK. It's going to give me an error message saying that wrong view mode. Change it to material mode to see the painting. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to cancel this for now. What I'm going to do is first of all come here and go to material. Click here for the customize and there will be an option for material. Switch to that. Go around to material. So now I can easily bring it back. So let's say if I try to bring it back and I'm going to click OK, it's going to give me an option. But you can see that the axis seems to be a little bit off. There are two ways of adjusting. E either you adjust using the horizon or a better way, what I would say is, you can simply come here and choose the particular view that you wish to. So in this case, I want to design the first as the front view. So I'm going to choose front view and then click on the versus sketch and then I'm going to bring that Sketch right here. 
So now I have this, right? I'm going to bring this plane right here. Zoom in. There we go. So I'm just going to zoom in. Let's say I'm going to keep it right in the middle somewhere so that I have a better look. In any one of these two, you can adjust to a specific number so that the scale matches overall for all of them. I'm going to keep at 700. It could be any one. Relatively, it's going to change the other vertical component. You can choose to fix either one of these two. I just randomly chose the horizontal one to be 700. You could have chosen the vertical one to be 700 or any number of your choice. But now, from now, for all the three views, I'm going to choose the horizontal component fixed at 700. So now you can see that right now, if I click OK, it's going to bring consider that OK. This is my axis system, the planes you can see. I'm going to reduce the transparency of this thing later on. I will show you how to do that as well. But for now, just try to think when I right click, Click on properties, you can go to graphics and increase the transparency. In that sense, when you apply it, you can fairly see the lines and the planes more clear. So now I can see that my axis system is aligned properly, but I don't want the entire other sketches to come here. I just want to be fixed around there. So I'm going to double click on this. So now I'm going to move this sketch to come all the way where I want my definite front view to look like so if i zoom in i want only this portion which is the right side as you can see of the line because the arrows are defined in this way and this way so this will be taken into accountable if i want the other side i can simply click on fit modification the simple once left click and it will take the other side but i just want to stick on this side so I can click OK. So now you see, instead of taking the entire thing, it just shows the half of the plane for the front view. Similarly, I can do the same thing. Well, first things first, first control S all the time as you go ahead by your practice, right? So now you can do the same thing for the side and the top view as well. So now for the side view, you can choose any left or right. Let's say I click on left view. You get the left view. If you don't want to come on the left view, you can click on the right view as well. I mean, all your choices. It's not going to make a huge difference anyways. Right, I'm going to click on sketch traces once again. So this is going to be for the left or right view, which is going to be right here, this one. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to bring the axis model. I'm going to flip the direction in this case. So you, you can see the 700 is consistent all the way through. I'm going to drag this axis because I just need a particular fixture. So I'm just going to zoom in for better accuracy so that I have a better understanding of where and what I'm considering. And I'm going to consider this to be somewhere close by, close to the tires, because I'm not going to uh, design the tires in this one, but it's still fine for taking into consideration. I'm going to reduce on the top as well so somewhere here this is what we are considering to design right now right and i'm going to click ok so i have these two views so now i just need to make an alignment of where these two should be scheduled at or aligned properly so you can see that right now it's slightly this could go a little further so i'm just going to move this a little bit further right here somewhere here and i'm going to reduce this as well and there we go looks fine looks okay there we go yeah fairly good enough fairly close enough i would say as you can see the scale is exactly the same so if i double click on this we have 700 scale right here and i double click on the front view as well i will have 700 scale right here as well so that's good. Control S once again. You can see that this is slightly brighter than this one because I've changed the transparency of the first one. Similarly, I'm going to do it for the top 
as well. So I'm going to come here, click here top view. It will take me to the top view. Click on immersive sketch. Click on the plane that I want to design. Do the same thing for the half of this plane as well. Right. I want to choose this one, this side of it. Right. I want to choose this side of it. So all right, let's see. Just a second. It's going to consider it right there. Okay, that's fine. That sounds about fine. That's about that's about right. So I'm going to consider just the half of it. Somewhere here. Let me click OK. Let's see. If I click isometric. You can see that the plane has switched in the other way. We want it to be adjusted right here on the other side. How to do that? You can see the plane rotation. I can move the rotation to come around here and be like, okay, this is where I want it to be. Right now, I want to flip the direction, and with respect to that, I want it to be align in a perfect way possible. I want this side of it to be taken into consideration as well. Now let's see if I click on isometric. I again have a little bit concern of how to adjust this. Okay, let's see. So this is the zoom, right? And this is the rotation right here. So as you can see that once I'm moving it, right, you can see with respect to that, taking into consideration that where the plane is moving as well. So let's say if I do this right now, and when I click on isometric, you can see that this is where I want it to be, but I want it to be on the other side. I want to take this into consideration on the other side. So once I click okay, Click on isometric. This is what I want it to be. But the scale should be far less smaller with respect to that. This is how you are going to rotate this as well. Rotation was fine. Rotation is fine. Rotation is fine, but in this case, this is going to be. 700 isometric okay alrighty I'm missing something from my understanding because this should be exactly the same as the other two let me delete this click on isometric zoom in a bit Go to the top view right here. Come on, immersive sketch. Click on it. Click OK. Open. And in this case, I want my right here. So this is my origin point that I'm taking right now with me. As you can see, right? I want it to be somewhere here. Then I want the flip side of it. Seven hundred as a dimension, right? I want this side of it. So let's say if I take this into computation. As you can see, the arrows doesn't align. I'm going to bring it right here on this side. When I click OK, taking into consideration the other way around. 
the flip should be the other way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there we go. Now I see that was the mistake that we were making again again. So you can see that just in order to align, we need to align the rotation with respect to the axis as well, which I forgot because of the first two getting it right the first time. So now we know how to align it properly. So once you rotate it, and then do the same thing. Then you can flip it accordingly. Once you click OK, now you got what you desired initially. So now we have a better understanding of okay what we are looking to design at first place. We can avoid this. This is just a little bit of exaggeration. If we want, we can just place the origin for this one somewhere here, a little, little bit more towards the tail. Uh, sorry, the tires, I mean, so that you have a better understanding of what exactly it's going to look like. And I'm going to increase this the same way. I'm going to keep it close to tires. Click OK. Right, somewhere, something like that. And this is fairly fine. This looks about the same thing. I mean, everything depends on what exactly you are looking for. So now, I mean, for me personally, the way I design is I keep all of them at the nose tip, close to the nose cone, and then start working from there. Depending on people's preferences, I mean, you can always adjust as per one's want or need. And you have isometric view ready. If it's too bright, you can simply right click, click on properties, go to graphics, increase the transparency by just simply dragging it, apply, and do the same thing for the top one as well. Right. Okay. So there you have at least a setup. I'm going to press Control S to save it. So that's it for the first video. So this is basically the setup for how to design a plane using generative shape design. In next video, we will show you how to design the fuselage, then step by step, how to design the vertical stabilizer, the horizontal stabilizer, the wings, and few other features that you can do it in a slow way or in a faster way. So thank you so much for watching. Take it easy. Bye.